What's up guys, my name's Luke. I am a full-time Rocket League coach and I make these videos because a lot of people suck at Rocket League and I don't want you watching to be one of them. So today we're gonna be breaking down a replay from Musty to figure out if Musty deserves to be pro. Now, I know this is a hot topic. So what I did was I actually looked through a database of Musty replay files to find the one replay where I think it is a completely fair matchup. Well, as fair as it can get, considering Musty is about to play FaZe, Alishin, and Wanda Mike. As always, if you're interested in getting coached by me, I run a six-week live coaching program aside other RLCS coaches and top-tier players. And if watching this video gets you inspired, you can DM me the code word MUSTY on Discord for more info. Anyways, let's get into it. All right, let's jump into it and check out this replay from Musty and Angel versus the ex-pro Wanda Mike and the current pro FaZe Clan member, Alishin. As always, if you're new here, we're on the road to 200K and my dream is to one day be able to do this full time. So if you wanna support, hit that subscribe button. It's completely free and you can always unsub whenever you want. Let's check out Musty's gameplay though and get into the analysis. So we're gonna see him go for the kickoff here. He's gonna cheat up. Uh, ball's gonna spit out back to Wanda Mike after the kickoff. And I actually really like this decisiveness for Musty. He's going to speed flip back. Uh, he does a great job of checking where the boost is, lining himself up, then snaking around. That's just very intuitive movement. It's really, really good from Musty. I've seen a lot of Musty gameplay before, and the number one thing I, I really do like about him is his speed and his efficiency. Um, now, we're going to get into why he isn't a pro in a second, or at least a starting pro on NRG, but like, make no mistake, like if I'm critical of Musty in this video, I think he's a really, really good player. There are just a few, few things that when I watch his gameplay, hold him back. One thing that I'm really, really keen on that I do like about Musty's play is he does not hesitate. No matter what his decision is, whether he's right or wrong, he goes for it. And that's a trait that absolutely, regardless of rank, you can copy. Now here is where we start to get into the consistency pieces, right? And the reason Musty might not be a pro. Here, this is a really tough shot. Like make no mistake, this ball is really, really close to the wall. But if Musty has a little bit more patience here, get inside the ball, he could put it at least, you know, off the backboard, make a tougher play for a Lucian. But he's not gonna get too much behind the ball and I'm sure he's kicking himself after that hit um, because that wasn't ideal. This is what I really, really like about Musty though. Like he does not hesitate. So Lucian goes up for this ball. Um, and the thing that you have to understand here is like flashback five seconds ago, Musty's rotating back. He grabs his half boost. Angel is rotating out, right? Pretty low boost. And Alishin is about to scale up the wall. And what you should be thinking here, like if you're Musty, right, is Angel clearly is going to be out of this play for a long time. And Musty, even though he's behind his teammate right now, this is totally his ball. So notice how he cuts, he pivots, and he gets ready to guard the net and just goes up instantly. And this is what I really, really like about Musty's gameplay because fact is, Illusion could do anything here. And it turns out he goes for a flip reset because he's nuts. He's, he's actually nuts. But Musty just goes up and he shuts down the high option. And I really, really like that out of his gameplay, that no hesitation. We'll keep watching though and see how that pans out. After this ball goes up the wall, um, Illusion is rotating back and yeah, so this is where like I'm gonna be critical of Musty and, and like let me be honest, it's so easy to be critical watching these games now, but let's let's break down why this is actually a bad decision and to understand it you have to go to an aerial view. So right after this kickoff, right, we just watch, Musty knows he was cheating up, right, we just watch Angel uh, and Wanda Mike dive into the corner, right, Illusion is landing here and naturally after a kickoff here, if Illusion sees this boost is taken, he cannot press pressure this part of the field. So even though Musty doesn't see Illusion, by the, sh the nature of the kickoff, Musty should know that Illusion is going to be forced left here. And you see that happen exactly, right? So Wanda Mike and uh, Angel are fighting in the corner. Illusion is forced to rotate back. Musty should know that he actually has time here to stay with this ball. He has to do what he did. Let me be clear. If he turns back like this, Illusion is a is a very, very wise player and he's gonna zigzag and cut in and interfere with the play. But Musty has to follow this ball for like two seconds here. And right here, he needs to swing out and take a shot, okay? If I was Musty, I think that's the best play. And if he does that here, he could probably bait out a double commit from one to Mike and Illusion, give Angel a potential shot on net. 
now granted, unfortunately, Angel did lose the boost race in the corner, but even, even so, if Musty would have made that play, I think Orange Team would have been much, much better positioned after the kickoff. Uh, and because of that little split-second decision-making mistake, it almost results in a goal from Lucia. So little things like that, understanding space, understanding kickoff dynamics, guys. Like, if you want to understand, like, high-level decision-making, start with kickoffs. Because kickoffs, you have the most information given to you, and they're the easiest to track. So, like, if you're ever, like, thinking about how you should move in-game, start with kickoffs. Pay ultra attention to your kickoff and you can kind of scale up your decision making from there let's watch musty's play though here because it's a little interesting um he's going to he's going to see a 50 50 here i like his rotation back he sees a lucian double back for the side boost um and so it makes a lot of sense for musty to challenge here i think it's really really smart that musty saves his jump um to not commit too far so all in all this play ends up being fine um he boost race a lucian gets in his face um not much musty can do there other than kind of play risk management and, and he does that pretty well Here's one thing where, you know, Musty's gameplay starts to get a little risky, though. Um, in this position, you have to understand, like, as Musty, you have limited boost, right? And this ball is really high up. So the gameplay here, and this is actually something I talked about with Illusion, like the best play here that Illusion told me in situations like these is you want to wait until the offense forces their touch in these positions. Because look, at the bottom right, we see Angel is deep in their zone and Musty needs to buy time here. But by going up instantly, even if Musty hits this ball, Wonder Mike is going to have 100 boosts. He can play the wall. He can play the ground. He has too much reading power on this play. He has too much advantage on this play. And Wonder Mike is going to be able to counter Musty. So Musty needs to be thinking delay, delay, delay. Once he hears that audio cue of one to Mike jumping, then Musty can go up and interfere. But this early jump from Musty, I think is actually a mistake because even if he makes a hit here, um, it could be very, very costly for the orange team. You see him go up and miss. And honestly, miss is kind of the best, the best case scenario there um, because that is a very, very risky play. Um, so in those situations, if you're ever in those situations and you need to buy time, pay attention to the opponent and then use your fast aerial to kind of match their play. So, so far, I hope what you're seeing is Musty's speed and his movement around the field is very, very good. Um, but these split second decision making uh, calls that kind of, I think, differentiate a pro from just a really good player or an SSL like himself, sometimes are missing when I watch Musty. That's, that's my read, at least thus far. But we'll see if my mind has changed. Here, I like Musty's patience a lot. Um, Fact is, you want to challenge this ball early as Musty, but when Wondamite goes for the flip reset this early, there's actually so much space between him and the center that I don't mind Musty being patient here. And I actually like this read from Musty a lot. I'm um, being patient, letting letting Wondamite cough up the ball makes a lot of sense. Using the camera movement is very wise there, understanding the threat. Um, Illusion really doesn't have a powerful angle on this net, right? He doesn't, Illusion is approaching from the side, and so even if he gets an arrow shot, it's not gonna be incredibly powerful. I like Musty's patience a lot here. This is some of the best composure I have seen for Musty's gameplay. Something I don't like as much is how closely he's following Angel here. Um, I mean, if Wondamite gets this dunk, he's not really positioned behind at all, and he can't really pivot back off of a poor read. Um, and if Wondamite gets that dunk, you can see Musty's actually kind of panicking because this could be a really, really poor situation. Now, luckily, Angel presses forward. Um, but even here, like you see, Illusion makes a tackle, and now Musty is out of position, and Illusion is going to be able to follow up this ball. You see, you see how that positioning just makes Musty a little awkward? So whenever you're playing, especially like at lower ranks when your teammates are less reliable that kind of sideways positioning in twos like positioning slightly to the left or slightly to the right of your team is really really risky and i advise you not do it okay in twos i think it's much much better to stack generally speaking um especially at the lower ranks just a little side point but let's keep watching here um see musty moving up the field now one thing i really do like here is musty's gonna go up for the ball he's gonna challenge and he's instantly flipping into the boost grabbing the boost and his speed around the field is really 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 good um he is just as fast if not faster than a lot of pro players i watch um but what i hope what you start noticing is speed is definitely not everything in these situations if you're not doing the right things with the ball that's the difference right at these really really high level twos twos lobbies if you can find those openings and then you see the problem here and you see like this is a decision like i see why musty makes it but i think most pros that you watch here are just doubling back after this ball this is a very very greedy challenge you know like even if musty gets through here like we watch from a Illusion's perspective, Illusion is all over this ball. Like he's he's rotating back. He picked up boost. He turned up field perfectly. Even if Musty gets the dunk, right? Illusion is gonna be back and he's gonna pick up the ball. Angel's rotating back. So that challenge 
all in all, it just doesn't make much sense for Musty. Um, and it's actually going, I think, to put Angel in a really, really tough spot here. Um, so if you're ever in similar situations to those and you've got you've got to re-enter the play, you've got a whole stretch of field to yourself, nine times out of ten, it makes sense to just use that stretch of the field, fake challenge, move back, and try to buy a little more time before you challenge for your teammate there because it's going to create a lot of awkwardness and difficulty uh, for Musty. All right, so after this play, though, let's say Musty misses the ball. Fair enough. Let's see how he rotates back. And this is actually a really good teaching moment because I want you to look at how Musty rotates here because this is not what I recommend you do. Um, I was talking with Curtis about this, and you see Musty's rotation here. He rotates what a lot of you know is what? Near post. This is called near post. And a lot of people would be watching Musty's rotation here and think this is bad. And I actually don't think this is a bad rotation for Musty, and, and here's why. I was talking with Coach Curtis about this, our LCS coach, and the thing about pro-level rotations that you have to understand if you're lower ranked watching is pro rotations will always be tighter than the lower ranks. And what does that mean? It means just at the pro level, you have less time to make wide rotations. So like if the ball is starting here in like a plat or diamond level lobby, like I think you have time to go all the way back here on your rotation and come back post. And that would be, you know, ideal scenario. But in these games, Illusion and Wonder Mike, Wonder Mike are so quick that I think if Musty goes all the way around, there's a chance they just squeeze this ball in the front half of the net. And so in this situation, like you see Musty rotate like this, and this is why this is so important, guys, like that you, you know, pay attention to the little things that pros do and hopefully watch more of these videos, right? Is this is the sort of stuff that pros are doing that you absolutely should not be doing. You see how he rotates under that ball and then the ball ends up coming across and then he ends up catching it here like it works out in this situation because he's a pro and because that's how rotation work at this level but it's absolutely not what you should be doing and then here's like like another thing that like musty does that he can get away with at the pro levels but like once again i really don't think you should be doing so like at, at this point angel's gonna get the ball right and they're on the offensive and musty just got a demo so he's kind of pushing up here um and gonna play for some 50 50 or something but realistically like what options is musty covering like this is about to be a 50 50 from angel here like if angel beats one to mike here it's a goal right and so if you're musty like you know five paces back i would have just doubled back around and tried to manage risk a little better and you can see when one to mike does get that beat worst case scenario musty isn't there to save the day um and now he's gonna have to rush back and it's almost going to result is this gonna result in a goal being scored on orange almost um and this is just gonna put orange team in a really awkward position coming back to speed though i like musty's play a lot here like this is the risk management that i like to see like you see one of might go up for this ball musty's kind of playing up close um he's waiting for the ball he's gonna go back he has 23 boosts he's gonna use all his boosts really well and this is actually a really really good fast aerial i know i po uh, pointed this out when we watched lethemir's gameplay but if you are not fast aerialing like this you are fast aerialing right. if you want a more detailed explanation definitely check out my lethemir replay analysis video because Lathamir gets even higher with 23 boost using a couple fast aerial tricks um, that you should definitely take note of. But I've been coaching like champ players in my coaching program this week. And I swear like three out of the last four champ one, champ two, and champ three players that I've coached have all been fast aerially wrong. So make sure you're taking note of what Musty is doing in those plays. Here in this case, we're going to see Musty rotate around. He's once again going to rotate center. Um, this is totally fine at his rank, but I wouldn't recommend you do it. Uh, and I was going to rotate up and Angel's kind of just going to create a goal here. So fair enough. Um, Musty didn't do anything wrong there, but Angel's going to create an opportunity um, and get a goal for the orange team. Something I do want you to take note of thus far, though, is how Musty cheats on kickoffs. Like all, at almost all high level gameplay, right? Mu like you, you should absolutely be cheating. I see a lot of players in 2v2 go for back corner boost and that's fine. Like if you have comms, but cheating is really much, much better um, just because it's so important to be the first one to that ball after the 50 50 and like that that's literally it this is a great idea as well he's gonna fly up to the ball um and hit this out something i really really like here about musty's play is notice how musty saves his second jump and i like, think to yourself when this ball goes up here like if you're musty are you doing what he does here no you're probably not you're probably fast aerialing and trying to hit this ball forward right but i really really like that musty saves the second flip because you absolutely can in the situation a great rule of thumb if you guys don't know is you can hit any ball that's crossbar height with a single jump a 
okay, with a single jump and a flip. And Musty shows that expertly here. Um, now, it would have been nice if Musty plays the ball upfield a little more, but something I notice in lower ranked players' gameplay is how often they waste their second jump. So, like in situations like that, pay attention to your second flip, save your second flip. You're going to find a lot more situations where that second flip is going to be useful if you could start to pay attention to it. Here, I really like uh, Orange Team's play, and oh no, this is like. Uh, this is so unfortunate. Like, this is a really, really good opportunity for the orange team. You see a double commit from one to Mike and Illusion because they're a little bit panicked. If Musty plays this ball, like, down into this area, this is a big threat zone. This is, like, a big threat gap in in blue team's rotation. And if Musty can play this ball down here and snake around even with like 20 boost and take a threatening shot, he could just create a goal. But instead, I think the path play here, um, it, it's it's a little too slow. Um, and if Musty plays this ball up here, I see one to Mike is rotating around, but if he can get it off into the distance um, and loop around, I think that's a much better play in this circumstance. It's really tough because even when these the blue team makes a mistake, like their recoveries are so quick that they're gonna be back on the ball. Um, but I'm not 100% sure if I like that play from Musty because um, it's going to allow blue team time to recover and yeah it looks like their offense is going to be a little stifled from that they're not going to capitalize on the pressure and here Musty has the right idea just a little bit of a mechanical failure like that's going to happen so then he's going to hit the ball up the wall and one to Mike yeah that one to Mike is just too quick like this is just overzealous for Musty after he makes this mistake like he needs to double back on this ball and just play risk management play for the 50 50 but Musty's like a really aggressive player right so what's he going to do he's going to hit it up he's going to try to recover he's going to try to follow it and it's like that's going to work against some players but not against players like one to Mike and Illusion like you're just going to get dunked. You know, so that's a situation where like, guys, if you ever mess up your play, like a lot of players are going to be really, really aggressive and ready to pounce after they see you mess up. So oftentimes, even if you mess up, like you can actually use that as an opportunity to bait the other team in and get like a 50 50 or something that's actually favorable for you. But when you play aggressive after a mistake like that, that's when you get into sticky situations. And I think that's what causes Musty, Musty's team getting scored on there. Unfortunately, like this is what happens when you cheat, like certain scenarios are going to happen like this, um, where a t like a good team like Blue is going to lose kickoff back left and when you don't have comms and when you're not you know in sync like Allison and one mike are here you know you can lose these first possessions and it looks like one mike's gonna get a flip reset beat angel and yeah that's a wrap it was a really really good fight from musty you could see how important first possession is right like in these high in in this high level gameplay because it is very very rare that you will ever get this much space with 100 boost after you know in a high rank 2v2 lobby other than the kickoff and so if you can control kickoffs i mean you see how that creates this goal um and so i mean i can't blame musty for not getting the save there that's just really really tough all right so there you have it that was musty versus two pros question is does Musty deserve to be a pro? And after watching this, guys, I'm going to be honest, not yet. I think when you watch this gameplay, you can see there are a few flaws in his game. But the thing I really do like about Musty is he has that potential, right? His speed is there. His mechanics are there. And you can see when it comes to the highest level, what matters most is the split second decisions and not necessarily what your mechanics can do, but what you do with your mechanics. And I think with time, as Musty sees more of these scenarios, I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility for him to one day, you know, make it pro. Anyways, that's just my take. Let me know what you thought in the comments and who in this replay analysis series you would like to see next. As always, thank you so much for watching. My name's Luke, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace, guys.